good morning. It's 9.20, so we'll get started. Our first speaker this morning is John DeGroote, and he's the director of GeoTree Center at the University of Northern Iowa Geography. The title is Example Application of Windsland, Oxland, uh, Urban Modeling System to Iowa Urban Watersheds. John. Thank you. Good morning. So uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about some uh, kind of GIS tools and databases we've developed to work with an urban stormwater modeling system um, or software. So basic outline, just talk about why urban stormwater planning, um, about the specific software out there called WinSlam, and then what we've done to develop some GIS uh, tools, databases to work with it, and example of a, an application in that urban watershed. So first I want to mention uh, where I come from. So I'm in, working in the geography department at the uh, UNI, and we have a little center there called the Geoinformatics Training Research Education and Extension Center, kind of a, a funny name, GeoTree. The purpose of our center is basically try to work on anything related to geospatial technologies, work with people within UNI, but um, also local county, state governments, things like that. Um, doing research, developing tools, uh, databases, um, and also trying to give our students, um, we have a Bachelor of Science in Geographic Information Science, so often our students are studying that and other um, disciplines too, give them a chance to work on uh, real world projects. So um, urban stormwater, um, a lot of what we've heard at this conference, a lot of it is to do with you know, rural and agricultural uh, situations, but urban stormwater is also important runoff from urban areas. Um, so it's useful to have some tools to, to look at that as also the you know, regulatory pressure on urban uh, areas is growing in municipalities. So this, there's this tool out there called Winsland that is already being used quite a bit um, to address these kind of things. So. Um, it, it's useful for you know watershed groups or municipalities, different groups to have uh, affordable, uh, useful kind of stormwater planning and, and modeling tools um, to do things like you know first of all characterize what, what, what is happening out in, in the urban areas in the real world um, to to invest, investigate what if scenarios that what if we put in some green infrastructure or our best management practices, how might that improve the situation, which can be useful in applying for grants, um, and generally just characterizing conditions. So there's this thing called Winsland. Has anybody used or heard of Winsland before? Okay, quite a few. Um, so it stands for uh, Source Loading <coughs> Management Model and then Windows um, part is not, not really that important, but it's been developed over you know a couple decades. Um, it's supported, developed and supported by a, a company called PB and Associates, based out of uh, Madison, Wisconsin, who um, continually develop it and apply it. They they sell it for a small amount of money to support the development, uh, continued development of the of the software. It is um, been used and supported by agencies such as uh, US EPA, USGS. Um, Wisconsin DNR. Wisconsin is probably the uh, most active state as far as using Winslam. You can see it at the website there. So again, it goes actually way back, to, you know, several decades. The, the um, theory behind it, and also um, monitoring data that has been collected over uh, multiple decades that support the, the development of Winslam. Um, it, it focuses on stormwater quality management. So um, beyond just flows and drainage design, it's looking at um, water quality. So what are, what are the runoff, what, what are the pollutants associated with uh, runoff. So it can be used as a planning tool to better understand uh, the source of urban pollutants and their control. And again, it, it's based on field observations over several decades from uh, many scientists and uh, agencies. It's 
and these are kind of Winsland words we're um, just working with the Winsland folks, but they say uh, only stormwater models are evaluate runoff volume and polluting, pollutant loading for each source area. So it, it, it's looking at um, detailed land use information, and that's kind of where we come in with the GIS as we're trying to develop some GIS um, tools and databases to help utilize GIS more effectively with Winsland. So again, it's evaluating runoff volume and pollutant loadings from different source areas, and there's very uh, detailed land use kind of information. So things like roofs, streets, sidewalks, driveways, parking lots. Um, you know, so you characterize what's out there in the landscape. Winsland uses that to, um, along with rainfall data, to estimate what the runoff volume and the pollutant loading potentially are from those areas. Then another aspect is it has uh, the ability to build in best management practices, a variety of best management practices to look at what are the potential um, ways to reduce runoff and reduce uh, pollutant loads coming from an area. So different kinds of biofiltration devices, street clean, um, grass whales, different, different um, things. So the idea is you can characterize what's out in the landscape, you can say either there's an existing BMP or practice put in, what's the benefit of that, or you could um, say, what if we do put in a, a given practice in an area and see what the benefit of that might be. So again, I kind of mentioned this, but you know, how effective are, are stormwater um, control measures in reducing runoff and pollutant loads, either after the fact or you know, in a what-if scenario, which can be helpful for potentially applying for grants or putting in those types of practices. So it can be useful in a lot of different ways for the TMDL um, implementation plans, um, identifying management practices that would be useful for uh, MS4 community, um, and potentially determining opti op optimal green infrastructure uh, spending. So Winsland is, you know, it's, um, has been used quite a bit. Like I said, Wisconsin seems to be where they've used it quite a lot, um, but it has been used throughout the country in different areas. Um, so a couple examples here from Wisconsin and um, Kansas City that show to be effective in, in modeling uh, runoff and uh, pollutant loads. So one of the problems is though it's, it's fairly um, difficult to use, it requires a lot of input, so um, that's probably part of what restricts its wider use but um, been used effectively for um, municipalities, campuses. Um, University of Northern Iowa actually used it uh, about six years ago. That's where we kind of got involved with this. Is we were um, watching how the, the University of Northern Iowa and the consultant were using it. It was kind of a tedious process and, and used GIS, but not in a very systematic uh, or automated way. So that's where we got involved to try to develop some um, better ways to use GIS with it. And that's what this uh, slide is kind of trying to show. It's, it's from a report of an uh, area in, in New Jersey that used Winslam and talked about how effective it was for um, modeling uh, the runoff and gluten loads and things, but how tedious and, and difficult it was to use, how inefficient as a tool it was to use for for an area, a bigger area, you know, part of an urban watershed. So very time, labor intensive. So this is what we're trying to get in. We're trying to develop some GIS tools and databases to make it um, hopefully more efficient to prepare inputs to Winslam and then take outputs from Winslam back into the GIS for visualization. Just uh, next will be a couple screenshots of Winslam. So it's it's Again, it's been developed over several decades. Um, it's it's uh, the Windows part comes from. It used to be probably a kind of a command line thing. Eventually, they put a Windows interface on it. But basically, it's an interface like this. Um, the user opens it up, and they have to define the detailed land use through this interface. Um, 
and then in, if they want, implement uh, best management practices within the interface. I'll go away from the microphone here for a second. So the over on the left, the idea is here is you, they, the user would define a broad land use category, <coughs> like residential, industrial, commercial, and within those, they define the areas that have um, things, different types of uh, detailed source areas. So how much roofs, how much driveways, uh -huh. what is the area, of um, streets, things like that. And traditionally, they have to enter this type of information through the interface in Winslam. And then if they like, they can introduce a practice. So in this case, they have one residential area with different uh, detailed source areas. So, you know, a certain amount of driveways, certain amount of sidewalks in here. And then they introduced a, a biofiltration imp uh, device that captures the runoff from those areas. And then with WinSlam, you can, when you run WinSlam, it, it'll predict or, or uh, simulate the, the runoff volume and the pollutant loads. You choose a certain pollutants, you know, sediment, phosphorus, nitrogen, uh, different things that you want to model. And it comes out with some uh, quite detailed um, estimates of, of those things. And if you introduce a practice, it gives you some sort of estimate of the reduction. So in this case, it's saying that there was a 69% reduction in sediment load. So what we're, we're trying to do is partly alleviate the need to enter this kind of information uh, manually through the WinSlam interface. So again, just to, you know, I've said this several times, but estimating annual pollutant loads and potential reductions before and after the MP introduction. But again, tedious to do, especially if you're gonna do it for a larger area. You know, if it's potentially just a single development with a, you know, one building and one parking lot and things, not so much, but if you're trying to do it for a, a sub watershed or a big part of an urban area, it can be very time consuming. So that's why we've worked on this thing called the Arc Slam. How many people use ArcGIS or GIS? So um, the idea here is that, again, we saw that people were using GIS to work with WinSlam, but it was kind of in an ad hoc way, not a systematic way, not an automated way. So what we were working on, um, we originally got funding from the Iowa Water Center to develop this set of tools and database uh, to work with WinSlam. So um, basically trying to make it more efficient uh, for the user to develop inputs to WinSlam and make it so it's more feasible to do a larger area. And then also to take those, you know, pass the data, the input data to WinSlam. WinSlam does its simulations, bring that data back into ArcGIS for basically mapping and visualization. So the original grant from the Iowa Water Center led to the development. Now we have a second grant from the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship State um, Soil Conservation Committee in which we're demonstrating its application to several watersheds or several urban areas throughout the state of Iowa. And also we're still improving the tools as we go along. Um, to make it a little, little more complicated, WinSlam actually can operate in two modes. One is where you try to characterize every um, kind of detail of the, the landscape out there. So every roof, every sidewalk, every driveway, every parking lot, you actually are, are putting in the exact amount of land in that, in those um, kind of detailed source areas. It has a second mode, which is more likely to use for a big area, you know, something like the city of Ames, potentially, you could do it for the whole city as a, you know, where you don't have to um, create exact areas for every roof and things. It has something called a standard land use mode, which is a kind of uh, akin or a similar to zoning type information where you tell it broad categories of kind of land use. And then it has a, a database of what, it, what uh, they've collected over the years, estimates of percentages of different um, detailed source areas. So how much, if we have a medium density residential, how much area of driveways, 20%, 20% lawns, 10% roofs, things like that. It's in a, in a uh, table basically that comes with WinSlam and then it um, does the calculations based on those 
that lookup table. So we built our ArcSlam tools and databases to work with both. So again, even with before our tools, people are using GIS as a, a pre-processing and a post-processing um, tools to work with Winslam. What we've done is try to make it more efficient and automated. So basically, it's um, we just have a loosely coupled system. So we just use ArcGIS and our tools and database to prepare data that Winslam can then use, and then we can take those data back from Winslam and, and map it and visualize in ArcGIS. So again, our present a project that we're working on is we're, we're applying to several um, watersheds, or not, not necessarily complete watersheds, but area, urban areas in, in different watersheds throughout the state. So again, this is an, from funding from Iowa Department of Agriculture Land Stewardship. Um, we're, we're working in several different watersheds, so Indian Creek in Cedar Rapids, Catfish Creek in Dubuque, Easter Lake in Des Moines, Cedarloo in uh, Waterloo, and uh, Storm Lake. And actually, a little bit others too. Still working a little bit in Dry Run Creek too, in, in uh, Black Hawk County. And we also, as part of that grant, we put on several training sessions or introductory sessions um, throughout the state. So we did that in the fall with you know, more than 40 attendees from several, three workshops, basically, um, in Dubuque, Coralville, and uh, Des Moines, or Hankety. So I was just going to give one example of, a, of an application of our plan. So we were looking at an area of Cedar Rapids, Indian Creek, Watershed, um, and con consultation with local stakeholders. They, they wanted us to do the Cedar Rapids urban area, um, doing the detailed modeling. So again, I'll step away here. But so we, we ended up doing kind of detailed modeling for where Cedar Rapids, the urban part of Cedar Rapids overlapped with the Indian Creek sub-watershed. And then we did a larger area where we did that standard land use, which is the more um, general modeling. So for the detailed source area, we have a customized geo database in our GIS that makes it easier to prepare these Winslam inputs. And Winslam has a very particular format, so we built the geo database to make it easier. But it's still a case of, of a lot of digitizing in our GIS with you know, uh, good imagery and, and using things like even Google Street View as a ancillary information to help populate. So at GeoTree, that's um, part of this is we have students that become proficient in this in, in, in developing these databases. But the geo database that we've developed helps to make it a little easier. So in this case, we've digitized this Cedar Rapids urban area that falls within the Cedar Rapids boundary, but also in that Indian Creek sub-watershed. Detailed, the, um, digitized to this kind of detail. So we're capturing all the parking lots, the driveways, the roofs, the um, sidewalks, and everything. So we've digitized 1,800 acres uh, in that area. And then basically you go through a few of our, our ArcGIS script tools that we've developed as part of ArcSLAM. You go through a, a process to define your separate drainage areas or, or separate catchments, and then um, use our tools to prepare a set of database files that WinSLAM can use, WinSLAM compli compliant database. And WinSLAM has very particular data needs, so our tool basically allows you to automate you first digitize the detailed source area, so you define catchments, and then you, our tool spits out Winslam compliant databases. So in this example, um, for that, that area, there were, we, we defined 139 separate drainage areas using LiDAR data and our tools, and then basically our tool spits out, in this case, 139 separate files that Winslam can use. And um, Winslam, when you have those files, can run in a batch mode, so it, it, it's basically all automated to do this. So you, again, we run Winslam in, in a batch processing mode. It spits out a summary file with, 
one record per catchment or per drainage area, basically. And then um, in that case, we, you, you, you can model a multiple year period. In this case, we're just modeling a, what, what's considered a kind of a normal climatic year um, using a rainfall file. And so basically, for each um, event, each rainfall event, it does this modeling and then it summarizes it per catch, you know, per, per catchment. Um, and we use that to, to later bring that back into ArcGIS. So it's basically a summary of the, the runoff for that year and the pollutant loads estimated for, for that year for each catchment. Come, basically comes out as a, a text file, a CSV file, common separated value file with all the uh, different things that you chose to model. So part of setting up the wind slam is you tell it, I want to model sediment, I want to model phosphorus. There's a, a variety of pollutants you can model. It always models runoff. So it spits out this big CSV file that um, has all this information summarized for your modeling period for each drainage or your, your, each catchment. So in this case, we had 139 separate drainage areas in this file. So that we have a tool in ArcSlam then to bring that back into, um, join it back to your original uh, date, uh, GIS data so then you can uh, visualize it. And so the idea here is you could see where maybe they're, um, you know, kind of hot spots or, you know, not hot spots. So in this example, it's, uh, um, you know, per drainage area, those 139 drainage areas, uh, as, you know, estimate the, the, the model, the, um, set of the yield there. So again, so basically what comes out of that is now you have in the GIS database, you have per drainage area, you have all the things that Windslam model um, in the database. Now also the idea there is that maybe you, you do your base modeling where you characterize the conditions for all these watersheds, then you can go back, open up any of those files in Winslam, and, and then introduce a specific BMP. Um, either where you already put in a BMP or where you have a hypothetical uh, BMP you want to introduce. So in this case, we just picked a, one of the drainage areas um, one of the tools we have in ArcSlam 2, we have a couple tools where you can define, you know, let ArcGIS, the, the, um, the watershed tools, basically we built into a single tool that you can define these drainage areas for your whole study area or you could use specific drainage points to define an area. So in this case, we have a specific drainage point that we're going to estimate what, what would happen if we put a BMP here. So you do the introduction of the BMP in um, uh, Winslam, so you have to open up that specific file, introduce the BMP, and then um, set up the BMP. Again, that's a, a, a kind of a, where Winslam requires quite a bit of information. So um, we're, we're trying to think about working in to develop some standard BMP files that we could potentially um, introduce as part of our GIS uh, processing tools, but we haven't gotten to that point. So at this point, the idea is you, you have to open up Winslam, introduce this BMP yourself, and then run the run the um, run Winslam. And again, then it's going to give you this um, output with a before and after. It's going to tell you what was the improvement made by introducing that BMP. So I'll quick mention the other part where we we. Mock, we used our tools to do a, a larger area, but we're, where we were digitizing these broader land use type situations and relying on the, the lookup table in Winslam to estimate the very detailed source areas. So in this case, we um, digitized all the Indian Creek uh, subwatershed. So it's, it's really the same process, it's just you're, you're using much more generalized um, land use information. So we did this for the whole urban, <coughs> urban area of that sub Indian Creek subwatershed. And um, in this case, we did 662 drainage areas or catchments. 
did the batch processing in Winsland and then joined that back to uh, those, all those catchments in ArcGIS. And again, the idea here is you're getting all that modeled results back per drainage area per catchment, and you can see potentially where hot spots are. But same thing, it's you know, all the modeling results gets joined back and are part of the database now. We've done very um, limited testing to kind of compare what is the difference, what is the what, what do you find when you do the detailed or the generalized and compare them to each other. Um, it's very preliminary. We haven't really um, systematically done this in all the areas, but you know we saw that there could be approximately in, in this area a 20% difference, where on an individual catchment um, could be up to 60% difference, but if you look at it as a, a whole, um, about 16% mean difference in um, model phosphorus load in this example. So to conclude. It's ArcSlam is a set of databases and tools and user guide that we've developed that is to basically try to hopefully make WinSlam more efficient, uh, to be able to use WinSlam more efficiently for larger kind of urban areas. Um, if, if you happen to be interested, we, we um, have gotten kind of where we know how to do this uh, smoothly, so we work with uh, several different local groups or, um, for example, Blackhawk and U Soil Water Conservation Districts where we help go through this process of, of the database creation and doing the modeling too. So I um, maybe have a minute for questions and, you know, if you have any questions, you can email me later. Um, so ArcSlam, what we're doing with it is the ArcSlam package is free and it's on our website. But the, the standard land use mode, mode edition, which we're calling ArcSlam Plus, we're actually um, selling for a small fee in, in conjunction with the Winsland folks with the idea that we bring in a little revenue to um, support its continued development over time. So the, the detailed source area part is free. The other one um, is a small fee. Uh, does this work at all with XP Swim or Swim? Um, no, this is specifically to develop the work with our uh, Winsland. For your uh, rainfall data, did you identify your rainfall with the progressive state? Did you have different, you know, typical year rainfall data for each? Yeah, we had one, uh, I mean, we did use, there's, there's one I think that comes with Winsland that they prepared for Des Moines. We had one prepared for uh, Waterloo. So I think when we did Cedar Rapids, I forget, but I think we used just the water blue line. So yeah. Oh, I work for Cedar Rapids and review developments. So if we had something to say within Indian Creek of watershed, you know, what would the like practical use of your modeling, you know, would you look closer at that area and see, okay, what would work here? So what would be the use in a specific area? Yeah, yeah. So if I have a development that's within that area that you've modeled already. Well, I mean, I think the idea is that it gives you some actual numbers, so it, you know, you pick a specific drainage area, you know it's there in the landscape, and it will, it will estimate what, you know, given it this typical rainfall, what, what kind of loads and runoff you experience, and then if you, you can introduce a, a practice and say this is what the improvement potentially could be. I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, yeah, I think uh, it sounds like it this point be a recommendation, but if you know, maybe we tighten things up and said, okay, if you're within this, you know, sub basin, these are the things you have to do with the goals you have to meet. Yeah, I mean, it, this is a, you, you kind of have to say, <coughs> we're going to do this, what happens? It's, it's not a, like a recommender system necessarily where I can tell you exactly what you should do. When you did the detailed study area, for, to determine the land cover. Is there the ability to use the higher solution land cover data sets that are, are the easily available? You mean like from local or from like a, the state high resolution? Yeah, the state. The state um, to be honest, there, there is no easy way to do it. I mean, 
Queensland has very specific data needs, and I've thought about that, and um, as far as the high resolution land cover statewide, the raster data, um, I, I thought about it, I, I didn't see any way to clearly translate it, so we haven't, we haven't tried to do that. We're also getting questions when, when the locality already has very detailed land use information. We're, we're still thinking about how to potentially <coughs> Winsland has very specific things it wants, so it's hard to translate existing data sets directly into that, unfortunately. All right, thank you.